All right, so welcome back. We're going to look at means again. So we're talking about our sample mean. In the previous video, we talked about what it meant for us to have a sample mean versus the population mean. And this sample mean, of course, is X bar is the way we normally say that. Uh, a lot of times when we say the mean, we're going to often refer to, at least in this course, uh, uh, as talking about this particular definition of the mean. Okay, the, to find the mean, it's just simply finding the average, which means you take all your individual pieces inside your sample, you add them together, I missed a plus sign right there, and then you divide by the number of pieces you had. Another way to write this is 1 over n times the summation, well that's what that e looking symbol is, that's actually the Greek symbol, sigma, and you're doing sigma of all the x values, so you're saying the sum in up, so this means, this is a mathematical symbol for sum up those pieces right there. Okay, so sum up those pieces. These two statements are the exact same meaning. Um, one might be easier for some of us to look at than the other. This is the um, version of this expression that we frequently use in later parts of this chapter in this book because of how we're using this embedded into other expressions. And it's just easier to write this item or this version of it on the right rather than the, this piece right here that we have over here on the left or in the middle of this. So that's just how we, we typically manage that. It's just a, a notation issue that makes life a little bit easier for us. Let's look at an example. I have an ex a, a very simplistic example here. I only have the four data points here. And how do we do this? If I want to find x bar, I'm just going to take my four data pieces and I'm going to divide by the number of data pieces I have. And I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence here. I, I don't know that many of us probably already know how to do all these things, but I just want to make sure that uh, there are no points to confusion. This is this little piece is just as simple as you think it should be. And I'm just going to go through, and I'm actually going to do this this way. I'm going to open my parentheses right there on my calculator. I'm going to do 80 plus 85 plus 85 plus 90 close my parentheses and I'm going to divide by 4 and it gives me x bar is equal to 85. All right. Well, that makes sense if you think about this. You got 80 and 90 and then 285 is the average would be 85. Well what if we did this? What we're talking about these are test grades or t test scores and this was the first four test scores for us. And then we have the fifth test score. Um, so we have 80, 85, 85, 90, and then some other value. Let's say that it is 75. Okay, what does that do to our sample? Well, then we're doing x bars now 80 plus 85 plus 85 plus 90 plus 75, and now we're dividing by 5, right? So what does that do? And I can actually up arrow on my calculator here, hit enter on that, and then simply insert, I did a second delete right there on an 84, and I'm gonna add in my, my 75 right there. I got my plus sign. And then I'm gonna go over here and replace four with five. And I get X bars now. 83, which makes sense. You would think the average would go down by getting a slightly lower score. So there you go. So that's just a straightforward way. Nothing crazy or amazing uh, in terms of like, oh, that was, that's tough. Uh, hopefully it wasn't. It's pretty straightforward. It's meant to be a pretty straightforward process. But what we can do with this is really powerful. The next piece that we're going to talk about is something called the median, which goes along with this. This is actually our first piece of central tendency. Okay, um, another way to talk about this is a uh, measuring. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with central tendencies for right now. And how we're talking about this. So the next piece is what we call median, which another way to talk about that is the middle. Okay, middle term. Now, when we talk about the middle term, what we're referring to is, uh, and, and we often refer to this as with a big M, okay? It, not always, so be careful in that notation. That is really 
text particular about which one you're dealing with, uh, but that is uh, a pretty standard for us to use big M for that one. And what that means is it's the value that's in the middle. So it is exactly the value where half is below and half is above that particular value. So with that previous data set we had right here, it was called S sub 5 is the one we're going to look at first. We have five data points. The first thing we need to do with those data points is put them in. So 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 90. And what we want is to find the one that's in the middle. So we got first and last term, second and second to last term, middle term right there. So our median here is 85, right? So we have a median of 85, we have an X bar value of 83. So we have two different data points, two pieces of data that we've found out of our data set. Now keep in mind what I'm saying there. We've, we've found two pieces of data. We've, we've created uh, this average here, and we've found this other piece right here, uh, this median, which tells us some other little bits of information here. And it, this collectively, these two pieces can tell us a lot about our data set. So for instance, um, if you're talking about a course, maybe this course, some of you may say, oh, an 85 in here would be great. Some of you may be saying an 85 in here would be horrible. People in both camps of that, uh, if you are going on into a pretty serious STEM field, I think 85, 83 would probably be the thing, minimum value you'd want to shoot for in this class. And we'll talk about, uh, uh, hopefully, you, if you want, you can go back and go back and review that video about study habits in a math class that is posted as well, and that is probably a good thing for you to look at. But in the terms of actual what these data points tell you, is this tells you that half the data is above this and half the data is below that. 83, look where 83 would be. It would be right here. All right? More than half the data is above that. In, so you got two-thirds of the data is above it, or, or three-fifths of the data is above it, and two-fifths of the data is below that. So you got 60% uh, above, and I guess 40% below. Here, it's 50% above and 50% below. Which one of those is a better indicator of the knowledge that you've gained out of the course? And we can really have a really interesting discussion about both of those and maybe find on both sides of the aisle, some of you might argue this one, some of you might argue the second one. This would be a really good discussion question for us to, to look at, and I'm going to want you to go back and just kind of comment about this as well on the discussion board that follows this, uh, this entry in Unit 1, uh, right, right there in the Chapter 1 notes, right below Chapter 1 notes. Um, but which one of these is the better indicator of the data? Uh, you have 85 which is the median, or 83. Now, if you're talking about your grades, well, 85 might be a better indicator because, oh, it's higher, so that's going to be a better grade. But what if, the t what if this were switched? What if you were talking about um, uh, the, uh, in this particular instance, if instead of 75 being the low grade, what if it was a 95 was the high grade? What would happen there? So we're talking about 80, 85, 90, 95. Where's the median? Well, once again, you got bottom top, bottom top, median. Median still 85. What about the average? Well, the average, let's do that real quick. Okay. So 80 plus 85 plus 85 plus 90 plus 95. And then divide that by 5. That gives us an X bar value of 87. Well, in that particular instance, X bar is the higher grade. But in both these situations, two different data sets, two different data sets have the exact same median with different averages. And then we could construct, we could construct a data set with the same average and different medians. That'd be a whole nother one for us to look at. So the question I'm asking you to, to you know, go to the discussion board is why would we want to use median? Why would we want to use mean? 
what would be the advantage or the strengths of either of those two uh, of those two pieces? Please go through and address this in the discussion before you go to the next video. Thank you.